Well, right now, Howie Roseman and Nick Sirianni aren't on the same page. Nick Sirianni is trying to win a football game. And to win a football game, it's my belief that he's trying to protect the quarterback and mask his deficiencies. Raiders week, football 24-7 across the Jacob Media Channel with NFL insider John McMullen joining us here as we turn the page on that Thursday night loss, officially turn the page uh, and begin the week. I promise Johnny Mack on this edition of football 24-7, all presented by Stateside Vodka, uh, no reference to Ben Simmons. Uh, <laughs> well, that's no. funny because we got to make one reference to it. Right. What is that? Go ahead, sir. <laughs> the lightest uh, media appearance at the Novacare Center, and I can remember, uh, it was only the coordinators talking, so there wasn't any practice or anything. But because of what was going on with the Sixers and Ben Simmons, there was like 12 of us there. The Eagles were like, where is everybody? And they were they were shocked. Wow. Well, that's our reference to Ben Simmons on this Tuesday, Raiders week, the start for uh, John McMullen. And the team goes back to work tomorrow. It seems like this period from Thursday night and all of the conversation about disliking Thursday night games and no practices getting ready for games. The benefit of it, of course, is on the other side. Now, I don't know whether you're not anybody takes advantage of it, but the benefit is once that game is played on Thursday and in the books, there's <clears> this <throat> long extended period of time, kind of a mini bye week before you get to your next game. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of fans are like, well, you should practice. You're coming off the loss. You're not allowed to. So, I mean, that's collectively bargain. All of that is in the CBA. So you have to give the players time off. They don't have to be there over the weekend. Um, Monday, everybody is back for team meetings. Uh, mm -hmm. Tuesday, uh, today, more meetings. Wednesday, get back to practice. So it's just like a regular week. You don't get more practice time or anything of that nature. Where it differs is for the coaches. The coaches have a little bit of extra time to take a look at themselves, do some self-scouting, um, maybe make some changes. Um, but we'll see. We'll see if that happens. Um, but no, I mean, Jody and I have been talking this on Birds 365 a lot. And, you know, he's like, why don't you practice? Why don't you can't? You're not allowed to. It's in the CBA. Anytime the, the owners want to get a sort of something back from the players, they say, all right, less practice time. Give us an extra game. Give us a 17th game. Give us a Monday night wild card game. Um, we'll give you less practice time. So, it's a mini bye week from the coach's perspective, but the players, they're just off. Well, they're off, but when you're coming off of a game that you lose um, <clears throat> the way they did on Thursday night, which is the fact that they lost the game on Thursday night, there is that mental break. Well, yeah, get, from that, get... there's, yeah there's a rest. I, I was specifically talking about the Eagles and struggling and people are saying, well, maybe they should take this time to work on some things. You're not allowed to. So yeah, from a rest standpoint, you got the weekend off. You can go enjoy it with your family. Um, go play some golf. Michael Clay played golf. He told us the special teams coordinator, uh, you can do some different things, obviously that you wouldn't be able to do for, for a typical weekend in the NFL. So from a rest standpoint, yeah, you get that extra couple days. And, you know, I think I mentioned it last week on the show. Jason Kelsey was one of the few players who said, I love Thursday games. And he loves Thursday games because he doesn't want to practice. He just wants to get back out there on the field. And then you have some time off after the Thursday night game. 
Johnny, let me get your thoughts, and I'm sure you talked about it at length uh, on Birds 365. I'm sure you've um, talked about it um, quite a bit, uh, and that is the return of Lane Johnson making his way back uh, and, and uh, back with the team. Uh, what specifically does it mean now? Do you know yet what to expect uh, when we get to Las Vegas uh, and the game on Sunday, will Lane play? What's what's what do you expect or what do you know? No, we'll get more clarification tomorrow when Nick Sirianni speaks uh, before practice. He'll have a better indication. They might not want to throw Lane Johnson right back into it. They might want to get him ramped up. On the other hand, if he feels ready to go, they could have him at right tackle. If that's the case, obviously. That's certainly the best for the Eagles, and that would put Jordan Mailata back at left tackle and Andre Dillard on the bench. Even though Andre's played pretty well uh, being forced into the lineup, first because of the injury to Mailata and then because of what happened with Lane Johnson. Um, so we'll get more clarification on that tomorrow, but he is back with the team. So we're headed in that direction, and that part of it's certainly a positive. Is there at all a possibility that with Lane potentially returning and Andre Dillard playing well during that stretch, does the possibility exist that Howie would pull the trigger and trade Andre Dillard before the deadline? <clears throat> yeah, that's uh, it, it. You know, if it were, were, I would say this, Joe. If if it weren't. If it were just an injury issue, say Jordan Mailata sprained his knee and Andre Dillard came in and played three games and played pretty well, um, then I would say, yeah, you try to take advantage of, of his value in what is an offensive line deficient league um, and, and spin him off uh, for as much as you can, can get his value is certainly much higher now than it was before he started playing. He proved he can play left tackle in the NFL, at least at a competent level. Um, and a lot of teams in this league are looking for a left tackle. What complicates things is the long-term future of Lane Johnson. I mean, you got to be realistic about this, not only because of what just happened with the anxiety and the depression. You also talk about a guy who is aging. He's post 30. He's had a lot of injury issues, continues to have trouble with his ankle and swelling in his ankle. So maybe if you're the Eagles, you start to think, well, we don't know how long Lane Johnson is going to be a right tackle. And you start thinking about a future of Andre Dillard at left tackle, Jordan Mylotta at right tackle. I think they at least have to entertain that and say, you know, maybe we don't want to trade Andre Dillard any longer. Um, it's going to be an interesting decision because he's he's going to have suitors. No question about that. Football 24-7 with John McMullen across the Jacob Media YouTube channel, all presented by <laughs> Stateside Vodka, as the scroll says across the bottom of the screen. Uh, soon to change, by the way. Um, use the code JACOB. Uh, go to statesidevodka.com and get 15% off of a one-liter bottle. Special thanks to all of our viewers for reacting to the special offer from Stateside Vodka. We've got some great plans coming once we get into uh, November, including a night out with Stateside Vodka uh, for our subscribers More detail and Philly Mag, so more details uh, about that. So if uh, stateside vodka is involved, if football 24 7 is involved, and Philly Mag is involved, Johnny Mac, that means in some way, shape, or form, I'm assuming you will be involved. I just don't know what those details <laughs> are, are yet. I'll let you know when we figure them all out, yeah. but we do have some good stuff uh, planned and coming up uh, in the month of November. Uh, last thing on the offensive line, um, I did see a note pop today that Opeta was reactivated. Is that coming off the COVID-19 restriction? Yes, that was uh, yesterday. He came okay. off the COVID-19 uh, list. So he'll be back at practice uh, tomorrow. Um, 
And and that's positive. It's always good to have depth. We know the history of this team with the offensive line over really the past two seasons. Um, and um, it continues. And, and Sue was one of those guys who was played. So it's good to have those guys in the mix. Obviously, the Eagles have one of the one of the the positives in what hasn't been a great early season has been that depth on the offensive line. You never l- n- like to use it, but I got to tell you, and again, I try to always put this in context. You go around this league and look at other teams. They lose a starter or two. They're cooked. Um, the Eagles have been able to put in competent backup offensive linemen. Pretty amazing when you compare that. Most teams are looking for upgrades at starters uh, at one or maybe even two, maybe even three positions on the offensive line. You know what, Johnny Mac, as you know, I did some traveling on Friday and then uh, some more traveling uh, returning back to the Philadelphia area last night. So I spent both flights listening to the schedule release broadcast that we did right here on the Jacob Media YouTube channel. If you remember, it was we gave away 10 Devontae Smith jerseys. We had all kinds of um, activity on the channel. It was the broadcast was over three hours long, you know, to, you know, to a man or to a contributor on that show. And we had lots of contributors. The team is kind of sitting where everybody expected them to be coming out of the first six games. So I'm saying to myself, man, I can't wait to talk to Johnny Mac tomorrow because this is what everybody said. So it's okay right now where we are. Yeah, I think uh, when you're in the midst of it, though, and I think you see some of the ugliness from week to week, remember, this is a very emotional game. It always has been the NFL and and pro football. You only play once a week. So, you know, fans gear up for it. They get all excited. Uh, It's almost like you have that uh, five stages of grief when you come off a loss uh, and you finally get yourself up to the next week um, and you do it all over again. So I think logically – If you say rookie head coach, essentially a rookie quarterback, obviously he started four games last year, but essentially a rookie quarterback. And you say, oh, you lost to the Dallas Cowboys. You lost to the the Kansas City Chiefs. You lost to the reigning Super Bowl champions, the 49ers as well. All right. You were supposed to. Um, And now Mm – the easy part of the schedule begins, not necessarily this week. Uh, Las Vegas is a pretty good team, but we'll see. They handled the, what's going on there with John Gruden and Rich Passaccia taking over. They did a very good job. We'll see if that can continue, but certainly a beatable team um, out in Las Vegas. Then you have the Detroit Lions who are winless. So I think it's pretty safe to say that's a beatable team. So, you know, talk to me in two weeks and say, right now, I'll I'll say, Krause, if if the final wild card team in the NFC is three and three. So the Eagles are a game out of the wild card. Now, from a tiebreaker standpoint, there's a ton of teams in front of them. So I'm not trying to get people hyped up, but. Um, I don't think this is a playoff team, but the fact that people are overreacting to a two and four start, you know, what the heck did you expect? Chiefs, Cowboys, Buccaneers, 49ers. Come on. Yeah. And if you keep it, if you use that as your context for where they are right now and for where they're going, beginning uh, with the Raiders and then, um, and then Detroit, I don't know whether they're a playoff team or not, but is it fair to for all of us to judge as harshly as head coach Nick Sirianni is being judged or as harshly as Jalen Hurts is being judged? I think the first story popped in the local media 
calling for Jalen Hurts to be benched. Is that relevant conversation or should we not even be having that at this point, John? Um, yeah, and that was my buddy Marcus Hayes, and we're going to have him on Birds 365 on Thursday, I believe, Thursday morning. So Marcus can defend himself. However, no, I don't think you should be talking about benching Jalen Hurts at this point. You know, however, I think it's fair to voice some concerns. Um, and I kind of look at it two ways. There's one of two ways you can you can go with this, and that's that the head coach is either protecting the young quarterback with his scheme, which I don't think is necessarily bad. Um, but I do think there are some issues with that. The other, though, the other possibility is much worse. And that's that the head coach isn't protecting the quarterback. He believes in the quarterback. <clears throat> and if that's the case, well, this is a pretty bad offensive scheme. And I don't think you want that. I don't, of those two scenarios I laid out, that's the worst case scenario. If he's protecting Jalen Hurts, I don't have an issue with it. It makes sense to me. They never throw the football over the middle. I've been giving out that stat all, all week. 208 throws, Kraus, Joe Kraus. I, I will ask you, guess how many of those throws, 208, have gone between the hash marks in the middle of the field? Give me, give me just a guess off the top of your head. Ten. That's actually pretty good. I thought you'd go six. Six. That is by far the lowest three percent, by far the lowest in the NFL. Everybody throws the football over the middle of the field. You go to a Tom Brady, who obviously had all the success, a little bit different now in Tampa because he's got receivers. But when he was in the end in, in New England, it was always about the running backs. It was always about the tight ends. He might have 20 completions in the middle of the field in one game. In one game. The Eagles have thrown six passes in six games over the middle of the field, which tells me they don't trust the quarterback. And... I've been saying this for months, actually. If you want to learn about Jalen Hurts, you're not going to learn anything by not letting him do anything. So I, I don't necessarily agree with this tactic. Um, is he going to throw some interceptions? Yeah, probably. But at least you know. I think the worst case scenario would be getting through this season, finishing with seven or eight wins, you know, being in the wild card hunt for that final spot until the very end, and you don't know anything about the quarterback because you spent all year protecting him. I think that's the worst possible outcome for the Philadelphia Eagles in, in 2021. John, it almost seems, and I'm processing as you're explaining, it almost appears – that that has to fall back on the coach. They're either they're either running a set, an offensive set, where there's an opportunity to throw the ball or not over the middle of the field to Dallas Goddard, to Zach Ertz when he was here. They're either creating that play or that opportunity or not. Right. I mean, it, it, I don't want it, to. It's almost that simple. Well, I, well maybe I it's mean, not. Maybe, maybe it's not. If there's no options to throw the football in the middle of the field, um, there's no options to throw the football in the middle of the field. And if you're not creating uh, route progressions where there's not an option in the in between the hash marks, you can't throw the football there. Um so again, you know, this is the disconnect that GMs often have with, with head coaches. It's the head coach's job to win on Sunday. 
this week. Last week it was Thursday, obviously. His job, Nick Sirianni's only job this week is to beat the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, GM has a different job. GM has to think about, yeah, he's got to think about beating the Raiders, but he's got to think about 2022 as well. One of the reasons Zach Ertz is no longer here. Um, you have to build for the future. You have to be honest with yourself. Where are we? We're not a Super Bowl contender. Zach Ertz isn't going to be here next year. So let's get something for him. And at the and and the Eagles did that. Um which I agree with. But at some point you got to come together and figure out what is the goal of this season. I've been saying it since probably week 2. What is the goal of this season? Is it to win as many games as possible? That seems logical. That seems like what every fan would think it would be, but it's not really the goal. The goal is to figure out what you have at the quarterback position first and foremost and what you need to do next year. Do you need to go in a different direction or can you build around Jalen Hurts? Well, right now, Howie Roseman and Nick Sirianni aren't on the same page. Nick Sirianni is trying to win a football game. And to win a football game, it's my belief – that he's trying to protect the quarterback and mask his deficiencies. Again, you, if you want to go the darker direction, it's that um, he believes in Jalen Hurts, but is a terrible play caller and has terrible <laughs> offensive schemes, which I think would be worse. So for now, I'm giving Nick Sirianni the benefit of the doubt, and I think he's trying to protect the quarterback. Either way, it's not good for the Eagles because they have to figure out what they have in that position and that player. Now, the second part of that is, really the third or fourth part, maybe they've already decided. Maybe they already know. Maybe they know, okay, this is not our guy. And we're just going to try to get through this season and we're going to go in a different direction after the season. That's a possibility as well. If that is true, is Nick Sirianni the guy that you're going to trust to build this team with whoever that first pick in the draft is or what whoever you're going to select in the top five or top eight picks that you're going to have next year because I have to question whether or not Nick if that's true I have to question whether or not head coach Nick Sirianni is the guy is he one and done is that a possibility well if they go in if they go two and 15 yeah he's probably going to get fired um uh, I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, if they win three or four games, uh, yeah, he might be one and done. I don't think that's going to be the case. The Eagles hired him for a reason. Um, they think he's the guy. Um, I don't think you can hold a a quarterback who's not an, a real NFL-level starter against a head coach, you know. One of the things, the Cowboys are on this roll. They've scored 35 points in so many straight games. They have the best offense in football, yada, yada, yada. Kellen Moore is the play caller. He's sort of turning into the flavor of the month. The Eagles interviewed Kellen Moore uh, in their coaching search. Uh, sort of as an afterthought, was never a serious contender. And now, all of a sudden... Everybody's talking about him as the next big thing. And Jerry Jones is even saying, well, you know, we might have to let Mike McCarthy go and say this guy's going to be the head coach or, or go in that direction uh, just to keep him. But my point with Kellen Moore is, look, I guarantee you, if you want to trade uh, Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper and uh, C.D. Lamb and Cedric Wilson and Ezekiel Elliott, and Tony Pollard for Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith and Jalen Rager and Quez Watkins and Miles Sanders and Kenny Gainwell. 
guess what? Nick Sirianni is going to be better than Kellen Moore. Simple as that. If Nick Sirianni has those playmakers, Kellen Moore has the Eagles playmakers, Nick Sirianni is going to look like the better play caller than Kellen Moore. Well, that answers it then. The front office has done a horrible job with the tools or the weapons for this team to be good. So I'll go back to I'll go back to last year. Carson Wentz did what he did based on who he had, which wasn't Might a be. lot. I mean, you look at what uh, he's doing with Indianapolis. Certainly, it's better than what went on here. Look, there's no question. Um, Devontae Smith is, I kind of put him aside. He's going to be a good player. Mm-hmm. And my dog's chirping in about it. He's, she's excited. Um, Jalen Rager, you know, we might be at that point where we're just saying, okay, it's not going to work. Quez Watkins has shown some signs, but, you know, he's not C.D. Lamb. Let's put it that way. Right. Miles right. Sanders, look, God bless Eagles fans. I don't know who they think Miles Sanders is, but they think he's great. I don't know why. He's not Derrick Henry. Let's put it that way. If you saw Derrick Henry last night. Um, This this talent um, at the skill positions is not great. And then, of course, we start at the quarterback. Dak Prescott is an MVP candidate. Jalen Hurts is a second-year starter with severe limitations. Um, it's a talent driven league, Krause. One team's got talent, one team doesn't. It's that simple. After all of the analysis and all of the opinions, it comes right down to that, Johnny Mac, here on Football 24 7 across the Jacob Media YouTube channel. What did the coordinator say today before I let you go? Uh, Michael Clay shot a 42 on the back nine. Uh, uh, that was, uh, you know, Jonathan Gannon, really low key because of what was going on with Ben Simmons. And I'm not even joking, really low key. Um, you know, we talked about the, the self scout and Jonathan Gannon was like, we self scout every week. So it doesn't change much. Just had a little bit more time. Uh, to do it this week than they typically would do it. And then Shane Steichen, the offensive coordinator, is becoming known as a guy who doesn't say much. Now, part of that is because he's not in charge of the offense. Uh, Nick Sirianni is, so you understand it. But Shane Shane is a tough nut to crack, man. He doesn't give you anything past coach speak. John, how much does Shane Steichen, how vocal is he during a game? Is he is he a sounding board for the head coach? Is he like what's he doing? Well, that's one of the things that you know we all question with a young head coach who's a first time play caller and. You know, it's interesting. I talked about this with Ryan Paganetti on Birds 365. You know, one of those things that the Eagles have set this up is that Nick calls the plays and uh, gives him the Shane, who who in turn talks to Jalen Hurts and has that voice in his head, the same voice Jalen Hurts I'm speaking of. And that's kind of redundant. It's like, why do you need that? Like, if I if I'm calling the play – uh, to Xander and I give it to you like why can't I just give it to Xander right, <laughs> so right. I I think it's just a matter of he wants to keep people involved and and things like that but we we've said from the start the makeup of this coaching staff look there's not a veteran presence I think that was the one thing that was glaring uh, when they put this staff together and I think you're seeing some of the growing pains and maybe if you had a Jim Schwartz type on this coaching staff, maybe you could head some of those growing pains. Everybody's going to have growing pains, but maybe you can stop some of them, head them off at the path. I think now you're seeing the painful sort of growing 
on the job from both a, a head coach and a quarterback. And that's what you're going through. Growing pains are, are, are part of it. I get it. Who is there to point out the growing pains? Who's there to say, okay, that's wrong. Here's how you do it. Okay, Joe Krause, that's not how you deliver a play-by-play, or that's not how you deliver a sports minute. Here's how you do it. Who's making that analysis on the football team? Maybe, I guess nobody, right? Well, the guy, I mean, they're, I don't, I don't want to, you know, overstate it. Shane has been in this league for a long time and, you know, Jim Bob Cooter's here. He's been in this league a long time and uh, they've been around uh, this Kevin Petullo and Nick Sirianni are, are very close and they've been together and they've been in this league a long time, even though they're young. Um, It's not a matter of not having guys who understand football. You kind of learn from your mistakes. Same thing on the defensive side with Jonathan Gannon. Um, It's more of a matter of the other stuff, the game management stuff, the, the uh, even stuff is uh, ancillary is dealing with the media. And, and all the other things you have to deal with that you never had to deal with when you were a coordinator. And the one thing I always say every coach has in common, every first-time coach has in common, they say the same thing. I didn't realize how much non-football stuff I had to deal with. Um, every single one of them, uh, to a man. And... You'd like to have somebody, and that's why, you know, you've had this sort of template, not just in Philadelphia with Doug Peterson, who had Jim Schwartz, but all around the league, you had these templates. Sean McVay had Wade Phillips when he first arrived uh, with the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, Matt LaFleur had Mike Pettin with Green Bay. Uh, Matt Nagy had Vic Fangio, you know, been around forever in Chicago. All these young coaches, you always had this, veteran sounding board <clears throat> Eagles didn't go that route it was a surprise to me football 24 7 with John McMullen across the Jacob Media YouTube channel all presented by Stateside Vodka we managed to kick off Raiders week uh, without talking about Henry Ruggs or Derek Carr we'll save that for uh, tomorrow uh, right back on birds 365 in the morning right back at no are you on birds 365 tomorrow's Jeff in for you tomorrow uh, Jeff is in because I got to get COVID tested, COVID tested but I'm going to, I'm going to stop by as a guest. I know Jody's going to have Seth Wickersham on, who, who's a great guest who just came out with the book about the Patriots dynasty. A lot of good stuff about the Patriots, uh, Super Bowl, uh, Super Bowl 52 with the Eagles. Uh, so he's going to be a great guest. And then, yeah, then I'm going to stop in to, to, to bog down the show. Browsing. All right. Good stuff from Johnny Mack. And when, when this concludes, or as we conclude, we'll finish figuring out your travel itinerary to Las Vegas. It's not easy to get in to Sin City. It's even harder to get out. It's even man. harder to get out. All part of those uh, parameters. Uh, that's uh, going to do it for this edition of Football 24-7 with yours truly, John McMullen. Don't forget to like, share, and continue to subscribe to the Jacob Media YouTube channel, all presented by Stateside Vodka. Go to statesidevodka.com. Johnny Mac, great stuff, man. See you next time.